I believe if you want to win the day, you have to win that first 30 minutes of the day. What I do is I do these mental exercises, these thought experiments throughout the day. My goal is in my mind, I fast forward to the end of the day and I pretend it's nighttime and maybe a friend or a family member asked me how my day was and I was like, today was awesome. And then I ask myself, what had to happen in order for me to feel that way? And that becomes my target that day. And I try to narrow it down to three things personally and three things professionally. The theme of what I teach with Superbrain and Limitless is you are the pilot of your life, you're not the passenger. This is such a, uh, this is gonna be fun today. Uh, I, I love being here in Dubai. How many of you traveled to be here to, out of curiosity? Wow. Okay, so I wanna make, the, uh, today, I wanna make, uh, help really kick off today, make this one of the most valuable days of, of your life. Um, really in my session, my commitment is always when I'm around stage is, I want this session alone to be so valuable to you when you're done. You feel like this was worth the travel and the tuition and the time just to be here for this, this session. All right, so, um, and, it's not, and it's not because I'm, I'm so great, but collectively we are together. And you have this incredible mind and that's really what makes all of this possible. So I'm not gonna teach what I teach in, uh, in Superbrain because a lot of the stuff that I teach is online. Many of you could find it after that. My goal is to give you some strategies on what you could do when you leave here to be able to get the most out of your, your brilliant mind and your, your, your bright life, all right? So um, stand up, everybody, real quick. You're like, oh no, he's one of those guys. <laughs> all right, so let's just, uh, as we do in Superbrain, let's wake up our body a little bit. Let's do our cross crawls. This is an area of educational kinesiology where you're taking your hand or your elbow and you're just, you're lifting your opposite knee and you're just, getting your, your body and your mind warmed up. This is an area called brain gym. You have a left brain, keep going. You have a left brain and a right brain. And this, anything that crosses the midline, just like when children are crawl, learning to crawl, it helps to develop that left and right brain connection. There's a little bridging station that divides your left and right brain cord, called your corpus callosum. Good, good. Shake out your, your hands, your body. And then massage your earlobe with your opposite hand, this one, your opposite hand. And you're gonna inhale and squat down, exhale and squat up. <laughs> inhale, go down, exhale, come on up. Make sure your neighbors are doing this. Inhale, go down. <laughs> are we getting this on film? Yes, inhale, go down, <laughs> exhale, come on. Put a big smile on your face. Inhale, go down, exhale, come on up. All right, let's, uh, some Qigong, bring some energy into you. Everyone do this, you're pulling energy in. And now I, I wanna challenge your brain this morning, kinda wake it up. What I want you to do now is have one come in, one go out, like this. You see this? Just look at your neighbors if you're, if you're wondering what you should be doing. Or this way. Okay, many of you, I'm gonna give you some feedback, are still doing this. <laughs> but try, try this, try, try this. Go, imagine a box. Imagine a box in front of you and you're in the lower quarters of your box. So like here. And then you're just gonna go up, cross, down, cross. Up, cross, down. You could breathe too, it's okay. In, up, <laughs> cross, down, cross. And then keep going. And then just even out the corners a little bit. Or this way. All right, all right, all right, all right. Shake out your hands. Just go like this. Like, go, you're on your computers, your phones all day. Just go like back and forth. You see what I'm doing on camera? Is this on camera? Yes, you can see this. And then here's your, where you're challenging your, your left and right brain. I'm gonna ask you to do one side twice as fast. Watch, watch this. So I'm gonna go like this. All right, shake out your head. <laughs> All right, have a seat, have a seat. All right. I encourage everyone to take some notes. Uh, I had a couple questions uh, yesterday as I got to meet many of you, how I start my day. I, I, I always put it on Instagram if you guys are, if we're connected there on Facebook or Instagram. Um, this morning, 
Morning routines. How many of you believe in morning routines? Yeah. I believe how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you want to win the day, you have to win that first 30 minutes of the day, right? You want to get that momentum of the day. For me, yes, there's wild biohacking things you could do with red light and, and hyperbaric chamber, you know, and these fancy cryo chamber, cryotherapy chambers. How many of you are familiar with some of the things I'm saying? What, what I do is really simple when I'm traveling. I, I'm staying at the uh, hotel right down the street. Uh, some of you I, I saw. I, first thing I do is I go out and I try to get the four elements in my life the first 30 minutes of the day. All right, the first 30 of the minutes of the day, I'm thinking about the elements. Now, the ancients believed that these four elements of air, water, fire, and earth made up everything in existence, right? And so I want to I want to infuse my life with those elements. And the great thing about these elements is they are free, right? And so the first thing I do is I go outside, and I want to get some earth on me, right? And so some of you I saw uh, walking out from my hotel room. There's this all the grass out there, and I took off my shoes, and I just wanted to get grounded because I feel like sometimes when we're frantic throughout the day, we're going really fast, we kind of lose our foundation. And uh, there's certain health benefits, certainly, to being connected to the earth. Some of you are familiar with like pulse electromagnetic field therapy and such. But this is free, just getting grounded. And then from there, what's important is you're getting sunlight. If you have sleep issues, how many of you have challenges with your sleep? Raise your hand. How important is sleep to your brain? A little bit or a lot? A lot, right? And one of the best things you can do to get better night's sleep is to reset your circadian rhythm. And what does it is light. All right, so even if it's hazy outside, getting out in the sunlight 10, 15 minutes first thing in the morning helps you to sleep at night, all right? Just your eyes are the only part of your brain that's outside of your skull, right? And it helps you to be able to reset your rhythms. And, uh, you know, we're biochemical. You think about dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. It's these neurochemicals that you turn on to be able to, to do the things you need to do that day. So right away, I have earth. Light for me, that sun is fire. I, uh, I also hydrate first thing in the morning. You know, you could lose a lot of water when you sleep at night through respiration, through perspiration. And just staying hydrated, your brain is mostly water, about 73, 75% water. Just staying hydrated, even throughout the day, you'll see me drink you know, water during my presentation, will boost your reaction time and thinking speed upwards of 30% a 30% performance increase just staying hydrated. And uh, so having water with you the whole time, very, very recommended. Um, I'll also take an ice bath or a cold shower. Uh, at my hotel, they, they accommodate really well. Just, you know, I go to the ice machine, fill it up, or ask, uh, ask the desk to bring up ice. How many of you kind of don't like the cold? Raise your hand. Yeah, me, me either. I grew up in a very cold, and uh, relatively cold environment where the winters are pretty harsh. But I think that cold, how many of you do cold showers or look around? Keep your hands up if, if it, you get benefit from it. I never want to do it, but afterwards, how great do you feel afterwards, right? And so a cold shower helps to, it's a neuro, nervous system reset, if you will. It also reduces inflammation. It gives you this uh, dopamine, neuro, uh, uh, neuro uh, adrenaline, if you will, norepinephrine, and it just kind of gets me in the, in the zone. So that's my water, cold showers, water. And then the last thing is air. And that's why I do my breathing exercises while I'm sitting on the ground, right? Very, very simple. How many of you have some kind of meditation or breathing exercise? Maybe you, you practice uh, six phase, uh, which I also do. Where I learned that from Vision also as well. So I get grounded and I think about my day as I'm going through it. And what I do personally, is I do these mental exercises, these thought experiments throughout the day, where I just think, instead of just going at reaction to the day, because I know I'm not gonna, ha I'm gonna be pretty stressed if I just react to everything, my goal is in my mind, I fast forward to the end of the day, and I pretend it's nighttime, and maybe a friend or a family member asked me how my day was, and I was like, today was awesome. I imagine myself saying, I crushed it, today was such a blessing, and then I ask myself, what had to happen in order for me to feel that way. Does that make sense? And that becomes my target that day. And I try to narrow it down to three things personally and three things professionally. 
And I'd love for you to do this right now, actually. Write, write down, imagine this, that you're, at the end of the day, somebody messages you or calls you, and you, or asks you when, you when you go home what, how your day was, and you're like, today was awesome. Why was it awesome? Just write down a couple of things, two or three things, personally and professionally. Now notice, that, I'm gonna keep on talking while you're doing this exercise. Notice the one thing I, I didn't do, because what do most people do when they wake up for the first 30 minutes of the day? They're on, they're on their phones, right? And you've, you've, you've seen the, the videos that I've done for Mind Valley. A lot of the things, many of you subscribe to our YouTube. If the, when you wake up, you're in this relaxed, you're in this magical state of creation, right? And I'm not looking to input you know, all this information as much as I am looking to output. But if you pick up your phone in this relaxed state of awareness, Marissa talked about like hypnosis, you're hypnotizing yourself or you're rewiring your brain for two things. Number one, if you pick up your phone, you're reacting, rewiring your brain for uh, distraction, right? Every uh, ring, ding, ping, app notification, social media alert, uh, uh, like, share, comment, whatever it is, it's just wiring your brain for distraction. And you wonder why you can't concentrate when you need to, because you're flexing your distraction muscle. But the second thing you're doing is you're rewiring your brain for reaction, right? Uh, our friend Brendan Burchard, who wrote Man uh, Motivation Manifesto, he says, your inbox is nothing but a convenient organizational system for other people's agenda for your life, right? And if you just get a, how many of you have ever gotten a message on social media or voice, text, WhatsApp, whatever, and it hijacks your mood throughout the day? It kind of puts you in a mood, right? So you, you really want to, the, the theme of what I teach with Superbrain and Limitless is you are the pilot of your life, you're not the passenger. You're, you're the pilot of your mind, you're not the passenger. You're not just reacting and, and having to respond, right? And so that, that's my goal in kicking off the day. So I did those things, uh, then I take my cold shower, and how many of you, by the way, when you're taking a shower, you get a lot of good ideas when you're in the shower? It's always when you can't write something down, right? And that's why you need <laughs> to have a super brain to be able to remember it all. And, but it makes you more creative, right? You have all these good ideas. I took six showers for you guys this morning just so I could be good for you, right? But the idea here is that puts you in the theta state. And in Superbrain, I talk about the different brainwave states to be creative, to learn languages faster, facts, figures, give speeches without notes. But, you know, it's about knowing who you are and then being who you are. That's really the success, right? Know thyself, right? Having the curiosity to know yourself. You know, if you want to improve your confidence overnight, Part of it, just to study your, your, your brain. You're in this incredible gift, right? The challenge is the brain doesn't come with an owner's manual and it's not user-friendly. So I'm gonna give you a framework today on how to do more. It's not in Superbrain, uh, it's in Limitless. How many of you have my book? Ra raise your hand. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna show you a framework and to the best of your ability, I would, uh, even if you can't write this down because you don't have a notebook, just, just understand this, this is, the, the key to become limitless. And limitless is not about being perfect. It's about advancing and progressing beyond what you believe is possible. Does that make sense? Now there are three areas you have to unlimit in order to be, uh, reach more of your power, reach more of your potential, reach more of your uh, profitability, your peace. So imagine everybody, if it's about advancing, I'm gonna turn this into a workshop, is that okay? All right. Imagine there's an area of your life where you're not advancing. Like, be honest with yourself. You don't have to share it, but what area of your life do you feel like you're not progressing in? Like, you feel stuck in your relationship, in uh, your personal health, in your finances. What, what area, if you're honest, are you stuck? Your memory, maybe, your focus, your, your reading speed, right? Where do you feel stuck? Where do you feel like you're in a box? So just imagine a box. Right, and a box is three-dimensional, right? Three dimensions, those three dimensions are the three forces that contain that box and that keep you stuck. There are three, those are the same three forces that if you expanded it, your box would expand, right? You would become more limitless. And so those three forces I represent by three circles. So if you imagine three circles, this is, what do they call this? A Venn diagram, right? Venn diagram. These are represented by three M's. 
And these are the three M's that will change your life and change your learning forever. Now, the first M, or one dimension of that box that keeps you contained and actually could unleash your power, is your mindset. Now, you hear this a lot. Vision was talking about growth mindset yesterday. But this is where you don't think something is fixed, right? People come to me all the time and they're like, they'll, they'll say, I'm too old. Or they'll say, like, they'll come to me and say, Jim, I can't wait for you to talk. I have trouble remembering people's names. And I always say, stop. If you fight for your limits, you get to keep them. Does that make sense? If you fight for the limits, they're yours. And so in your mindset, this, these are how I define mindset, because there are a lot of speakers on mindset, and I could put people in different boxes and categories. So that's what I do when I learn, because I need to know, uh, you know what areas where I need improvement. Mindset is, I'm defining as your attitudes and assumptions about something. Your attitudes, assumptions about something. So your mindset could be your attitudes, assumptions about money, right? If your attitudes, assumptions about money, like you don't feel like you're worth a certain amount, uh, you think that uh, money is evil, whatever it is, will that keep you in that box? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? <laughs> yes, right? Because your behaviors are going to be determined by your beliefs. You write this down. All behavior is belief-driven. All behaviors are belief-driven. How many of you want to create a new result in your life? Ra raise your hand. Some, a new result. To create that result, you need to do a new behavior, correct? It's not going to happen by itself, new behavior. In order to do a new behavior, you need a new belief that, meet, that, that allows that behavior to be possible, right? Because your brain is this incredible supercomputer, and your beliefs, your self-talk, are the programs it will run. So if you tell yourself, I'm not good at remembering names, you will not remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your supercomputer not to. Does that make sense? Because you can learn a great technique on how to remember names, but if your mindset is, I'm too old, I'm not smart enough, you're still going to be stuck in that box. The second M, let's say you have a limitless mindset. Now, by the way, three areas of mindset to be aware of, to put your sensory awareness towards, about yourself, right? So it's not just your attitudes, assumptions about money, or your attitudes, assumptions about relationships, it's your attitudes, assumptions about you. Three things I would put under here are things like what I believe is possible. So write that down, what I believe is possible. The second thing, what I believe I'm capable of. You might believe it's possible for your friends or people you follow or people that, you know, uh, people on stage, but if you don't believe it's possible for you, you're still gonna be stuck. But this gives you an area where you could put your focus on, right? Because you could change that through uh, self-hypnosis, through uh, EFT, right, through EMDR. There, there's so many different, NLP, there's so many different therapies you could use to change your limiting beliefs. We talk a lot about that in, in our courses. But this is your mindset. The third thing, not only is what you believe is possible, what you believe you're capable of, I'll give you a third one, what you believe you deserve. Because what you believe you deserve, it's like you're a thermostat. And that thermostat is the temperature that you regulate things with, right? I always talk about the difference between a thermometer and a thermostat. A thermometer just reacts to things, it reacts to the economy, it reacts to the weather, it reacts to how people treat you. But the happiest, most successful, productive performers, they act more like a thermostat. A thermostat doesn't react, it knows the temperature, it gauges the room, but it sets a temperature, and then what happens to the environment? The environment reacts to you, right? That, that's leadership. So this is your mindset. But you could have a limitless mindset and still be stuck in that box because you also need the second M, which is your motivation. And I know this is a big issue for some people, you know, because I get a lot of feedback. How many of you know what to do, but you're not doing what you know? How many of you know what exactly? You probably, if we're honest, I'm going to call you on your, your, your BS, your, your belief systems. If, if I'm honest, many of you know more about this, these subjects you're learning over these couple of days than most of your friends and family will ever learn. Is that true? Yes or yes? How many of you, like, like you have friends and family just wondering why you're at this event right now, <laughs> right? And so they don't, they don't know, and they don't know what they don't know, but you probably, if you're honest, have forgotten more 
but is your life reflecting that? And I'm gonna show you the difference that makes a difference. Things could be in your head, but the motivation, and in Limitless, I, tell, I teach you the three keys for limitless motivation. I'm not gonna go through it now, but a lot of this is your purpose. A lot of this is the reasons. If you're not motivated to remember someone's name, you're not gonna remember that person's name. Does that make sense? Because things have to go from your head to your heart to your hands. Head, heart, hands. So I don't always ask myself, like, what do I need to do? A lot of times, how many of you are faced with some kind of big dilemma or difficulty right now, honestly? That you're here because of you're facing something and you're kind of being tested. Most people ask, what do I need to do? I, I would suggest before you ask that question is to step back and say, who do I need to be? You know, what do I need to feel at this moment? Because if you're gonna feel compassionate or be compassionate, your behaviors are gonna take care of themselves naturally. Does that make sense, all right? But a lot of motivation to go overcome motivation, this is all purpose, this is all energy, this is all small, simple steps. Little things that you could do because sometimes you're not motivated because this thing is too big, this goal that you have. And I'll even have like my goal up here, like I'll, I'll, I'll have my goal here and I'll say like, this is my goal. What's the mindset I need for that goal? You know, what's my purpose, energy, small, simple steps, my motivation? But you can have limitless mindset, limitless motivation and still be stuck because you still have to activate the third M, which are your methods. So you, let's say you have limitless mindset, you believe it's possible, you believe you deserve it, you believe you're capable of it, you have limitless motivation, you could still not have the life you de desire or deserve because you're not using the proper methods. You're using old methods of marketing, old methods for fundraising, old methods for losing weight, right? Old methods for learning, right? A learning, old methods for memory, old methods for memorization, old methods for reading, and then you're still stuck in that box. So the reason I bring this up, and then I'm gonna give you the strategies now, is because most people, especially the past few years, out of fear and security, they're downgrading their dreams to meet this current situation. And I'm gonna tell you that that's a big mistake. You shouldn't be thinking about, like the problem is not usually the problem. The problem is our attitudes and assumptions about that problem. And what I'm saying here is you shouldn't be downgrading your dreams to meet the current situation. You should be thinking, how do I upgrade my mindset? How do I upgrade my motivation? How do I upgrade my methods or skills to be able to meet those big dreams? Does that make sense? Y yes or yes? All right, now watch, watch this. Where the three M's, there are also three hidden I's here. Where mindset crosses over with motivation, you have the first I, and that's inspiration. And now this is how I look at the personal development performance world. There are books on mindset, there are books on motivation, very good books, very good books on, on methods to, to lose weight, to make money, right? But you won't be unlimited or limitless unless you address all three in your life. So where mindset and motivation cross over, you have inspiration. Because what's something that's inspiring? It changes your mindset and it gives you some motivation. Is that true? Yes or yes? Yes, right? But you don't have the methods, so you're inspired, but you're not doing anything. That's, that's where most people like live. Where, let's say, mindset and methods cross over. This is a very popular place people live also you have the limitless mindset and you have limitless methods for getting whatever that goal is up here. The second I is ideation. Ideation, what's ideation? It just stays an idea. You believe it's possible and you know what to do, but it still stays in your head. Because why? You have no, say it out loud, motivation. So you're still stuck in here, right? And then finally, where motivation and methods cross over, you have the third eye, third eye, interesting. <laughs> implementation, implementation. And that's your application, that's the action, right? And the challenge though is you have motivation, you're ready to do this, you have purpose, energy, you know exactly what to do, the methods, but you can still be stuck in that box because you lack what? Say it out loud, mindset because your mindset could say it's not possible. 
and that's why you self-sabotage. Or you take one step forward and two steps back, right? Or you, don't th you think you don't deserve it. Now, by the way, right here, there's a fourth eye where all of the M's and all the I's converge right in the middle. That's integration. That, that's the goal, right? That's just who you are. That's your identity. Another word is your identity. And when it's your identity, it's just, you just, I am limitless. That's, that's what you're saying to yourself, right? And so anything that you're facing right now, if there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be, narrow it down. What's holding you back? Is it your mindset, motivation, and methods? And then you know where to put your focus. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm going to share with you right now what I think people should do like when they leave here, if I, if, if I was going through this. And this is something I'm guilty of also. You know, this is my 31st year of coaching, so I get a lot of feedback from people all around the world. I want you to just write down this. Let's say uh, people have a problem with this. They don't start. And I'm going to make this an acronym. And this is no specific order, but you need to, you need to touch on each of these things because it'll help you learn faster. And again, again, if you want to learn how to remember names and languages and give speeches, that, that's in super brain, right? If you want to learn how to triple your reading speed, that, that's in super reading, right? You could get that out there. How many of you listen to my podcast, right? We have over 320 episodes. They're free. There are no sponsors. Everyone's 10, 15 minutes long. You could binge listen to it on how to do those things. Plenty of methods, right? But my goal here is how do you, how do you make your life like really transform when you leave here today? So the S here, in no specific order, this is state. I always start with state, meaning your emotional state. Because all learning is state dependent. Please write this down. These are the first principles to super brain. All learning is state dependent. That you won't do something different if you don't feel different. Because what's the key to long-term memory? Tell me, for those of you who've gone through super brain. Put your hand out like this, information. Oh, come on, everyone. Information. One more time, put your hand out and say it. Information combined with emotions become long-term memories. If you don't feel something, you're not gonna retain it. It just won't happen. All right, so stand, stand up, everybody. All right, <laughs> stand up. Getting groups of three, four, or five right now with people you do not yet know, introduce yourself. Go, three, four, or five, really fast, because I have limited time. Three, four, or five people, introduce yourself, go. Move around, get groups to three, four, or five. All right. We have to do this fast, all right? Because everybody, we want to be very efficient here. With your new group, shh, please, shh. Repeat after me, shh, everyone, shh. All right. There are three emotions you want to cultivate to learn faster. Or you are emotional beings. And if you're not tapping that emotion, you're, tap, you're not getting to more of your full potential and purpose. So how you exemplify this is in your body. It's, the human brain doesn't learn through sitting there and just consuming information. It just doesn't. I wish it was that easy, right? It's not just listening to podcasts and reading books. If you want to make it into an actual outcome and a behavioral change, which is the goal for all of you, you need to feel a different way, right? So what's on your to-feel list? There are three emotions that will help you learn faster. Fun, focus, and ferocity. Right? If you, if you, how many of you believe that your life could be better if you're having more fun, more focus, and more fierceness? Right? The courage, right? So the goal here is how do you get that in your body? And for me, I like to play, uh, how many of you when you were kids used to pretend you were like superheroes or dress up like, right, yeah. And here's the thing, how many of you are willing to play a little bit while we're here? Yes, yes. All right, so we're going to play a quick game that's going to get it in your body that you'll be able to take this for the rest of your life. We're gonna play superheroes again. And I'm gonna choose three superheroes that are gonna represent fun, focus, and uh, fierceness, all right? And you're gonna exemplify then show your team, all right? So the first one is Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is fun, right? But I, I need you not to think about it intellectually, like think about, oh, Jim's saying fun, how's Spider-Man fun? But get in your body. Show, so show your team what Spider-Man's move is. Go, one, two, three, go. Now, where did, uh, shh, where did the sound effects come from? Where did that come from? 
All right, so super, uh, Spider-Man is fun, right? Has a lot of fun, makes a lot of jokes when he's uh, on battling. So it's, I want you to go one, two, three, fun. Ready? One, two, three, fun. The second superhero, the uh, second superhero is focus. And for me, focus is uh, Black Panther, all right? Yeah, Wakanda forever. So uh, you make two fists and you're going to make an X. That X is your focal point. And if you heard me in Superbrain, I talk about the power of a focal point, like that lead domino that makes everything in your life easier. I'm not going to talk about it now, but just imagine it's warm outside. How many of you used to play with a magnifying glass outside, hot day, and you would burn what? Ants? You're not burning ants. <laughs> leaves and stuff like that, leaves. But that point is very sharp. That point is very bright. And isn't it interesting, and I love how some of you are still doing this, isn't it interesting that when you call somebody sharp or you call them bright, what are you saying about them? That they're smart, that they're intelligent. Maybe they're not smart or maybe they're just better focused. This focus, that X, creates a focal point. So I, I'm thinking about you know, Black Panther and, I, and you're gonna go one, two, three, you're gonna go like this and say focus, ready? One, two, three. And really feel focused, ready? One, two, three. Focus, great. And what was Spider-Man? Fun, right. And the third superhero that represents fierceness, FFF, for me, Wonder Woman, all right? Yeah. All the amazing sheroes. So hands on your hips, shoulders back, your billion dollar smile. How many of you saw Amy Cuddy's uh, uh, TED Talk? talking about doing this before a meeting and before you get on Zoom, right? Because your physiology affects your psychology. So ready? You're going to do your, you're going to do your Wonder Woman. You're going to say fierce. Ready? One, two, three. Fierce. Here. Okay. One, two, three. Fierce. Okay. Here's the game. Here's the game. We're going to play a game. Put your backs, face each other back together. Turn around with your partners. Put your backs kind of together. Three, four, five of you. Quick, quick, quick. Shh. Here's the game. In a moment, I'm going to count to three. You're going to choose one superhero, and you're going to turn around. I'm going to count, I'm going to count one, two, three. You're going to choose one superhero. You're going to turn around. You're going to say that word and do that pose. This one, this one, or this one. In order to win this game, all three, four, or five of you have to do the same move. Now, if all of you match, what's this? You win. What's the sound you make when you win? So you celebrate. What's the sound? Oh, come on, this is mind value. What's the sound when you win? Fantastic. If one person doesn't match, then you lose. What's the sound you make when you lose? Oh, that, that was a lot more natural. You might, you might want to check that. All right, so turn around. Face, you're, you're not facing your partner. Think about the superhero. Turn around, back to back. Think about the superhero. Go back to back. I'm going to count to three. You're going to think about it. You're going to do their move. Ready? One, two, three. All right. How many winners? How many winners? Raise your hand. Wow. Some of you really tapped into that. Like, uh, does Mind Valley have like an ESP program? Like a, like a, mind, like a mind meld? Okay, I want to give everybody a chance. You second chance to redo this. Go back to back one more time. We need more winners, more winners. I'm going to count to three. Shh. I'm going to count to three. This is your chance to redeem yourself. Go back to back. Think about who you're going to choose, what move, what word. And you're thinking, is she going to change it on us? No, no, you're thinking really this, honestly. If you don't win this time, it's not your fault. It's totally his fault. Here's how you can win. Ready? One, two, three. All right. High fives, your friends. Sit down. Have your high five. High five. Sit down. Have a seat. Write this down. Please write this down. All learning, like life, is state dependent. All learning, like life, is state dependent. You never want to sit here the next, like, 
the reason why I, I think it's great that people come up and they perform and you get around, you dance, is you up, we're not logical, we are biological. Again, do you think about dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, the endorphins in the room? When you can connect those neurochemicals to your learning, you're going to learn a whole lot easier. And plus, who doesn't want to have more fun with their learning, right? And so don't learn something in a bored state. So the first S, state. The T, very simple, teach. If you want a better learning and a better life, don't just consume this information. You share this information. Right? Don't let this be like the time, like, you know, what happens here, I'm hoping ripples way beyond. How many of you are committed to, sh to sharing what you learn over the next couple of days? Because when you learn it to teach it, you learn it better. Like imagine you had to give a, a, a TEDx talk next Monday when you get home and, and you, about the things you need to learn. You had to share it with your family, share it with your team, share it with your friends, right? because you take advantage of something in science called the explanation effect. The explanation effect says if you learn something with the intention of explaining to somebody else, you're going to learn it faster. That just makes sense, right? You're going to focus better, you're going to take better notes, uh, you're going to uh, be able to teach it to somebody and organize it, right? So whenever you're learning this, think about how do I teach it to somebody else? I do this all the time. You know, when I'm sitting there and I'm, I've been here the entire time listening to all the speakers, I'm thinking, how would I teach that? The A here, and it could be many, many different, different things. I talk a lot about the A as in active. I'm thinking about how do I make learning not a spectator sport? Because learning is not a spectator sport, right? You don't want to passively learn. The human brain doesn't learn best through consumption. It learns better through creation and co-creation and cooperation, right? So I'm always thinking about how can I be more active like you're doing, like you're taking notes is active. Asking questions is being active. Getting up and standing up and doing these silly things that I do is more active. What makes it active is paying attention. That's another word for A, attention. How do you have greater levels of attention? Because where your focus goes, your energy flows, right? Like, put down your pens for a second. Just shake out your hand because you've been writing a lot. Everyone do this. Look at me. All right? Make sure your neighbor's shaking out their hand. All right, make a fist. Make a fist. Put it to your chin. Now, come on, everyone. Where's your chin? All right? The A, when I'm talking about attention, is you're paying attention. A lot of people say, like, Jim, I have a horrible memory. I can't remember names. I have horrible retention. It's not your retention, it's you paying attention. And a lot of not just learning goes by when you, you miss things that you could learn from, but you also miss a lot in life if you're not present, right? And that's to truly, that's why I think you meditate, honestly. Like I don't meditate to become enlightened, that's not my goal. My goal is when I'm sitting here and my attention goes somewhere else, right? And Emily Fletcher talks about this. How many of you are familiar with Emily Fletcher's work? She talk, we've had her on podcast a number of times. I know she, she does stuff with Mind Valley. You know, you can't make your heart stop beating because that's what your heart does. Any more than you can make your mind stop thinking because that's what your mind does. But when my mind goes somewhere that's not useful when I'm meditating, I bring it back to a mantra or I bring it back to my breath and that's where I get greater attention or focus, right? I start building that attention muscle and then it shows up later in the day. So I learn really well because I've trained my attention. So another word for A, for active, is attention. And then the R, this is a big one because I use this all the time. The R here is review and also retrieval. I'm always looking, retrieval, there, there are three parts to memory. This is just science and some of you learned this back in school. The three stages of memory is you encode, encoding, storage, retrieval. Encoding, store, encoding is going in, storing is putting it where it needs to be, retrieving is pulling it out. Now if you want a better memory, you need to optimize all three of those things. And you'll notice with Superbrain, the reason why it works so well is we encode it through visualization, through emotion, we store it in our home and our body lists, and some of you know this, right, using the low-key me method or the, or the memory palace that we teach, storage. And the, but the magic comes with the retrieval. And retrieval is not just the third stage of memory, because how many of you, you're wondering, like, you know that person's name, but it's not, it's not on the tip of your tongue, but you can't get it out. Or that actor's name, or that movie, name of that movie, right? 
you might have not encoded it or stored it or you're having trouble retrieving it. But did you know that the act of active retrieval, quick retrieval, actually helps you to learn that information better? So constantly when I'm learning something, I'll take time to not only review what I just learned, like during a brain break that we take like you know, every couple of hours, but I'll also test myself and ask myself, do I still remember their names? Do I still remember what those three M's stand for or those four I's stand for? And that's when you know you know it. Because most people aren't forgetting something. They, they could recognize someone's face, but they're not remembering them. They're not retrieving that information. So, so here's an example. Yesterday was a long day. You learned a lot. I want you right now to write down three things you learned yesterday. Without going through your notes, try to actively review in your mind or retrieve three awesome ideas from yesterday. Do that now. And I'm going to talk while you're, speak, while you're doing this right now to challenge you to make it a little more difficult. But the other reason why is if you can't come up with ideas, notice that when you review it, that really determines how much you remember. And this will show you your, your, your blind spots throughout the day. How much were you really paying attention? What are three things you learned? What, you know, what did you learn from Ronan? What did you learn from uh, Christina? What did, what did you learn from, from, from Vision, right, from Marissa? What are some of the things that you took away? And this is, by the way, this should be difficult if you're not doing this on the active. I do this at nighttime. I'll do a retrieval and I'll just walk through my day. I'll take five minutes before I go to bed, my nighttime routine, and I'll go through, what did I eat today? Who did I talk to today? You know what I mean? And that's an incredible way to build what they call your episodic memory, your epi the episodes of your life. Because if you don't remember what you ate yesterday for lunch, then are you really focused on it? Because it's not just what you eat, it's how you're eating. Most people are, are distracted, right? They're watching something or they're not even present. So it's not only like, you know, who you're spending time with, but it's the depth of that presence, right? And so that's really the goal. So you're reviewing what you did yesterday and then you're retrieving it. Now, by the way, like when you could do these three things you learn, come up with one takeaway. What's one thing that you're gonna do different tomorrow? So, so out of everything you learned today or this morning, What's one thing you could do tomorrow to change everything? I, I, I've learned very early in life that one step in another direction completely changes your destination. Do you see that? And what, so what's one thing you could do tomorrow? It doesn't have to be big. Even the things I talked about this morning, you know, earth, fire, water, air, little by little, a little becomes a lot because consistency compounds. So what's one new tool, one technique you learned from yesterday, one new idea where if you put it into play next week, things will change. Maybe it's, hey, I'm going to do this six-phase meditation. I'm going to read 20 minutes a day. What's that one little thing? Because first you create your habits, and then your habits create you. Now, we don't need microphones here, but what's, what's, what's one of the things that you, you're committed to doing? Just, just, just raise, your, raise your hand. Just one, one thing. Yes. Just shout it out. I totally can't hear. Maybe we do need it. Yeah, in the morning, right? First, first thing. What else? What else can you do? What's one new thing? Go outside. Absolutely. So these, everybody knows what to do, but common sense is not common practice. So what I'm asking you to do is go through a view and a retrieval. And then the T here, this is your time. And this is the scheduling. The number one thing that you have, like your productivity performance tool that you have, is your calendar, right? So like what I'm always thinking about when I'm sitting here all day with you, because I don't usually, you know, I'm, I'm here because I'm part of the Mind Valley family. I'm learning from, from all, all the incredible instructors. I'm asking myself, how can I use this? Why must I use this? But the third thing I ask, when will I use this? Because if you don't put it in your calendar, like you'll put maybe, doctor's appointments in there, or maybe uh, work appointments, investor meetings, or whatever. But are you, are you are, for every hour you spend learning something, you've got to spend an hour putting that into action. Is, is that fair? Yes or yes? And I know this is not really sexy, but is it the difference that makes the difference? Yes or no? So, but if it's not in your calendar, it won't get done, because you either forget to do it, or you won't want to do it after you do everything else. Does that make sense? 
And for this, by the way, these to-dos that you're thinking about, you could put that on your son list. For those of you who've done, you could put that on your home list. You could put that on your body list, right? And if, if this doesn't sound familiar, definitely go through Superbrain again. Like I use my alphabet list all the time where I just take the 26 letters uh, of the English alphabet and I come up with an animal for each one. So an A could be what? What's an A? What start with the animal start with A? Say it out loud. Great. What's an animal that starts with B? Great. Now I'm going to say C. C? Right. And D? Dog, right? And what I'll do is I'll think about, let, let's say I want to get more sun in, in the morning. I'll associate that animal for A, for me it's alligator, and I'll associate it in a creative way with the sun, right? Alligator eating the sun. And then I'll go for B for me, and B for me is like a bee, like a bumblebee. And I'll say like, oh, I want to I make sure I get my water in. That one thing, it will make a difference. And I think about a bumblebee like carrying lots of water. That sounds so silly and childish, but who are the fastest learners? Children, right? And they're willing to play, they add emotion. So you could go back to Superbrain, take all the tools and techniques. I recommend, how many of you are connected, are we connected on Instagram? I put today uh, a link there in my profile and it'll give you access to like all this free stuff in addition to the things that you've taken before. But my purpose in being with you today, I was talking to John Lee who's speaking later, going back to this, I really think these events, you learn insight, this is insight, instruction, ideas, mindset, right? This is inspiration. This is implementation. And I really feel like these exercises that we do while we're here together gets you like, changes your perception of your identity about who you are. Because I promise you, like deep down, you know this, otherwise you wouldn't be here. There's a version of yourself that's patiently waiting. It's, it's waiting for you, right? And you have to, yeah, right? And, and your goal today, tomorrow, the next day, is keep on showing up for yourself until you're introduced to that person. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.